Here is everything you need to know on how to test if a shirt is high quality. Stay until the very end because I have a surprise I think you're absolutely going to love. Subscribe and click the bell and give this a like so more people do not waste money on absolute garbage. <laughs> this shirt, this is from Brooks Brothers and it's an executive and in the style of classic shirts that are Oxford cut, so you can see that this is a bit larger. It's literally falling off my shoulders because I ordered a size too big. There are so many things that I can break down about what goes into a good shirt. I have a video linked below of this really expensive shirt that was expensive for no reason, especially for it being off the rack. It was simply paying for the marketing of a collaboration in my and the quality wasn't there considering that just for a couple hundred dollars more, you could get it totally bespoke. I have the NYC vlog linked below of the my experience at Turnbull and Osser. I will also in the future make a video of the difference between a $12 shirt versus a $100 shirt and a $100 shirt versus a $500 shirt versus a $1,000 shirt. So subscribe and click the bell for this. This is a Brooks Brothers shirt. I love Brooks Brothers. I'm a huge fan. He's the reason why Ralph Lauren exists as a designer. Well, one of the reasons why Ralph Lauren exists as a designer. And one of the Huntsman Savile Row associates, Ed Turco, is one of the living legends who kind of helped conserve American history, American style, by working with Brooks Brothers and literally writing the book on Brooks Brothers. I have it here. He helped do the research and he works at Huntsman. And I have a full video and he's in it. And I have pictures with him. And he's kind of a legend and he's one of my heroes because he's conserving Western style, Italian, um, British, and American to be specific. There's generations of style. He's the one who helped write this. I also got this book from this haul and it's a really good book about uh, Brooks Brothers essentially over the years. America didn't have their own style until Brooks Brothers came out with their own style of suiting. So if you go to different suits around the world to different designers like Italy, all these different Italian brands, they look to England for their suiting style. Something that makes it extra special is that each copied a, a Savile Row tailor. So it might be Geeves and Hawks, might be Henry Poole, might be um, Huntsman. Each suit maker has their own specific design, their own specific make of how it's built. Like roping is different, whether it has roping, armholes are high up if it's more built. There are different types of suiting and there are different signature suit styles that were taken from the British because they were the ones who invented it. They invented shirts. And a lot of people are obsessed with haute couture. It's a really dreamy way to dress up. It's a very occasion wear. However, we live our lives every day not wearing couture, not going to our 9 to 5 in beautiful dresses. And this is a work shirt. Obviously, it's a dress shirt. And the darker it is, the more casual it becomes. White and blue is typically a dress formal shirt. It's also pink and, or red and white stripes. It depends on where you work because on where you work because some professional places will have it in your contract that you can only wear white and blue. This is the most formal. This is what we allow. So we do not want to distract people. So this shirt is Brooks Brothers. It's a rounded cuff. It's a barrel cuff. This actually fits my chest very well because I have an F cup chest. I'm five two and a half. I'm very petite. I'm short and this button is a, the same size as this one. So the thicker the buttons, you might think the better quality is when it's actually the other way. The finer it is, the better it is because you want it to not stand out so much. And English style is also very subtle where this is also uh, the same size. You typically want a smaller size button up here because it's easier to button when you're trying to get the collar up. <laughs> And this also makes it more casual. The more embellishments there are on a shirt, say if it's a pocket, then it's a casual shirt. If this is a dress shirt, there are no pockets. The sleek or something is, the more formal it is. Same with the black tie. The shoes, if there's broguing, if there's any laces or design, it's typically more casual. The sleeker it is, the more patent it is, the more formal. This is what the shirt looks like untucked, and I'm going to tuck it in in a bit to show you. So this does not fit me. Cut of this shirt is meant to be tucked in. So when it has this rise, it's meant to be tucked in. And shirts a long time ago used to be much longer. The way that we are making shirts today is uh, a lot of companies wanna save money on the fabric. So they will make shorts a little bit shorter. That's why when you raise your arms out of a shirt, it comes out and you have to re-tuck it again, which is really annoying. However, if you get a bespoke shirt, this will be different. Or if you get a more traditional style, find it vintage, secondhand, they're always fabulous. Shirt garters are um, a little bit uncomfortable if you're not used to wearing um, proper lingerie. Shirt garter will keep your shirt in if you move your arms. And one of the reasons why the collars and cuffs are different on this shirt is 
because it's in the style of a banker shirt, which is meant to be a bespoke shirt. And if you go to Turnable and Osser at the store, they have so many different types of cuffs and collars. And what they do is when your shirt is wearing at the collars and cuffs, because that's typically where it wears. Unless you gain weight, then it starts to wear behind here when you reach. So that happens a lot to my husband's um, shirts. So what happens is you take it to the original place that you bought it and they will decuff and decollar the shirts. They will literally cut it off and replace it. So these shirts will literally last you forever when it comes to purchasing something bespoke, which is why it's so expensive. But um, it's not expensive because it's like a big brand name. It's because of all the service you're getting how it's gonna last you forever, the quality, and so many other details and the craftsmanship. And there's a lot of tradition that goes into it also. So it's not as simple as, oh, you're paying for the marketing. It's a big brand name, like uh, big mainstream designers. Remember that you're the one who's literally choosing the fabric. You're literally choosing where every seam will go, where every uh, little design and detail goes, where every dart is supposed to go. So you tell them, I want it to go in here. I want it to go out there. So it's a really, high-end service that you don't get say for example if you go into if you walk into chanel if you walk into brooks brothers yeah sure they might hem it for you but they won't go into detail about what fabric you're using where the mill comes from and explain everything to you like oh we have a relationship with this brand for many years we t we have um cultivated a uh, collaboration with laurel piano for the past 30 years and this is all the new things are offering they say if you move your arms up and the shirt comes out, the shirt doesn't fit you. So it it just depends on the make and the quality. This is obviously not my size, but I like the oversized look. It's very 90s and I'm gonna tuck in my shirt to show you. Okay, this is what it looks like tucked in. It's obviously way oversized. The thing about Brooks Brothers, I'm gonna show you in the next bit. Uh, I love their quality and their style is very traditional. It, it's a lot of English inspired style, which is a lot of the style that we wear today in America. Also, when you see a shirt that has a button like this, a really nicely made shirt doesn't necessarily need a button. I'll get into that when I explain like the $500 versus the $1,000 shirt that you won't see a button sometimes because the shirt is made so well fitted to you that it will be unnecessary for an extra button. The shirt also comes in multiple colors and there are designs that I'll have linked below that are also not included in this haul. And check out the full blog post because it divulges even more that I don't want to make this video way too long. <laughs> I could just go home! Now we have an English style expert here. May you please introduce yourself, Mr. Dixon? What are your credentials? Well, I've been wearing clothes since I was born. <laughs> Most days, actually. This shirt has a lot of buttons, which is good because it doesn't have gaping. It's got two buttons. What exactly does two buttons mean versus one? It's just style. It's just style? And what kind of cuffs are these? Those are barrel cuffs, I think. Yes, these are barrel with a square end and I wore the Kelly belt because this is a really chunky outfit especially when you leave all the tags on. I need to remove these and I just got these and I haven't filmed it yet. I got really excited just put them on. Can you tell me a bit about this shirt? What are the details that you notice? You've got contrasting colors and cuffs. Why is that? I noticed because you've gone for two extremes, so blue and white. So traditionally a city shirt that people in Wall Street would wear would be white with, um, uh, well blue, blue shirt with white collar. Um, but a much paler blue and I guess to kind of make it more feminine they've made it much darker the contrast looks really good and then again because it's female you've got the pink thread oh yeah the little accents the buttons, yeah. it's even in the lining too yeah that's nice it has the smaller button at the top here at the collar so it's easier to button we got it out of the package but what I would say is that don't have a crease here oh okay so um, when, when you go to iron that for the first time and I know you've just put it on straight away but you want to get rid of that crease because they've the ironed it flat in it, or pressed it when it's gone in the pack. But you want to have a nice round cuff. And as a personal preference, I like a, I like a, a crease down the arm. Why? What does that mean? Again, it's just fashion. Historically, the crease would be there to show that you pressed your clothes. Back when um, there were like ticks and fleas within clothing, the only way to kill them would be to press a hot iron to them. And over time, people found that by pressing a hot iron, you actually put creases in. And so the creases were originally there to show that you had cleaned your clothes with a hot iron, therefore you were kind of like tick free. This is just a holdover from those days, obviously. The vast majority of people are tick free anyway. <laughs> and so the creases are just 
this smart, they're associated with um, the military. But I mean, originally this would be um, an underwear garment. So you would never see the shirt. Oh, this was an underwear. What was over? Jackets and things like that. And if you look at like some of the more historical clothing, you would, although they were wearing a shirt, they would, you would never really see anything. And the shirt would be worn long. And then at the end of the day, that would be your, your nightwear. And still in some places as well, it's, um, although it's kind of more relaxed now, you don't want to have um, bare shirt sleeves. My husband didn't want to quote it because he wasn't 100% certain on who said this but the story was there was a tailor who worked at a tailor shop and at the shop you have you remove your jacket so you're working in your shirt so that you can really get into the fabric and you're working where one time he needed something from across the street so he ran across across the street in his shirt his boss stopped him and said what do you think you're doing you need to put on a jacket before you go outside. So you're not entirely dressed unless you have a proper jacket on top. It's considered too informal. Star dot detail. Yeah, just recognize it. I have another Haas and Curtis shirt that is very similar with, but it's plain, it's solid without any pattern. And this is very subtle, I like it. It actually looks like it's woven in rather than a print. You're right. I did not also tuck in this shirt correctly. I simply just put it in um, <laughs> to quickly show you this video. You don't want to button all the way up to the top button because then that means you're wearing a tie. And it looks funny if you're not wearing a tie unless you're really stylistically um, expressing yourself that way. Go ahead. And this is a double cuff, a double cuff also known as a French cuff with a square cut. An example of how it would look with a cuff link is like this. And this is how it came in the store. These subtle light pink accent threads which i think are gorgeous these are brooks brothers silk knots i'll have them linked below these are haas and curtis these are for ladies they have a ton of other designs and there are so many beautiful cufflinks that this came in this box this is the haas and curtis emblem rose gold because i feel like it's softer i feel like it's more approachable i like them when they're not branded and it's really elegant and my husband actually forgot his um cufflinks one time and didn't know where they were but i had these on hand he said that they're very good for men's too but there are men's cufflinks obviously um on haas and curtis make sure to read your sizing and that uh read the size guide to make sure that it fits your dimensions also remember that when you purchase a bespoke shirt or made to measure you're getting a shirt that you know the person who's making it you have a genuine relationship with them and you will know them for many many years if you keep buying shirts from them or getting shirts made i should say so when you get shirts from a factory it really dehumanizes the process and you're supporting jobs essentially so it's not a factory line where one person does this the other person does the next job or simply from a machine this light blue is so chic and i feel like it really brings out my features if you are dark hair wear blue this will make you look like a million bucks if you're neutral or cool tone and i prefer double cuffs because uh, French cuffs are dressier, but they also aren't as stiff where like I feel like if it's not a bespoke shirt If it's not made for your size the fit model is obviously gonna have a different sizing than you It's got all this extra fabric when it is a single cuff. So it's very much like extra Fabric where I don't want it to be I like my shirts to be as slim and as fitted as possible because I have small arms And I love showing them off because I have a really broad shoulder I have a really big frame up here adds more bulk to your arm and I don't think that's necessary I can see this with my express blazer. I will never style my sweaters the same again A lot of people like where they tie it like this where I saw Lauren Santo Domingo Tie her sweater around like this like kind of draped over her shoulder and you can tell the material was like Cunha or alpaca or cashmere because it was so thick it was so fluffy it looked incredibly soft and she did kind of sideways like dripping over her almost like a poncho it still keeps you very very warm i love this color it's this light mint green with white stripe and then i added this pearl necklace it's really pretty and i am really excited to wear this because i can see so many ways of styling it with my ralph Lauren cable knit cardigans and with my cashmere cardigans if you want to see the whole video of the whole haul i have it linked below along with all the accessories and the jewelry and also follow me on ltk or instagram and or instagram instagram at gia g dixon for daily style inspiration i also post tons of elegant daily style there and only high quality no polyester please thank you so much for staying until the end of this video i created a monthly mood board that you can access with classic elegant feminine style and it gets sent straight to your inbox every single month and it's not exactly every day on my ltk i have daily style inspiration but if you're not a person who likes to be on social media all the time you can sign up to it for free and download it linked below thanks so much for watching and i'll see you later